Well hello, this is Old Man Tony here again. I think it's been a while since my last video. I have to confess, I just haven't managed to get out and do anything. I've been out a few times on the bike, but didn't take the cameras. But I thought I'd better get on with what you've all been waiting for, to find a load more of information about Old Man Tony. It's the Q&A. So what I'll do with this Q&A, is I'll stop at various locations along the way and dig out my piece of paper with all the questions on and more importantly all your names because while I'm doing the Q&A I can give you all a shout out at the same time but what I've got to say is um, thank you very much for the overwhelming response rather than write the questions down on a bit of paper I had to make myself a little booklet to put them all in oh and because there's so many questions I may have to split this into a couple of parts so there's not one huge long video to look at. I don't want to bore you to death, just to sleep. So on to the first location and the first set of questions. Zoom zoom. Right, now we're in my um, garage because I've got a couple of questions about woodworking. I think I've got three questions and the first one and the second one come from Bram the Wades Mill Woodturner and Rob64. They're both asking when I'm going to do my first wood turning videos. Well I still think think about it, I've tried it a couple of times, um, the videoing was a bit of a failure so I've got to do some thinking again and have another go, but I think I probably will do something in the future with wood turning um, and make use of the um, nice bit of kit I've got behind me, so uh, I think um, wood turning could be a future video but certainly not a regular thing. If I started doing woodworking videos as a regular thing, I think the best thing would be to have a new channel for that. And um, the other question I've got on um, woodworking is from Skyway 400 LTD ABS. Um, I think he's named after a scooter. And um, I think from the translation, which is always difficult because Skywave, also known as Ronin Poo, is um, from Japan. So sometimes we get things mi mixed up in the translation. But he wants to know how long that I've been doing woodworking. And um, I've pretty much done a little bit uh, all my life, but I've never really got um, seriously on with it, time to do things, particularly the wood turning. Uh, only since I retired really, so um, when I was age 58, which was now four years ago, is when I started doing more and more woodworking. And um, I think I'll continue, I really enjoy doing it. So aside from riding a motorcycle, woodworking is something else you can empty your mind and get stuck into um, just purely woodworking, like you can when you're riding a bike everything else drifts way into the background and you can just enjoy the wood turn or riding your bike they're both equally as good right on to the next venue at the Desert Rats Memorial near Thetford Forest and um, I'll do a few more of my Q&A's. So the first question is what is your favourite meal consist of including beverage and dessert and that's from Landshark 503. Well I've got to say I'm a bit of a carnivore so um, if I'm going to go for anything I'm going to go for a thick juicy steak and then whatever comes with it, maybe a bit of salad or something like that. Uh, maybe a baked potato or some chips or otherwise known as French fries to our American cousins. And um, he also wants to know about beverage and dessert. So I probably have a beer with it, but I do like quite like a glass of red wine too. So um, maybe I'll start with the beer and then move on to the red wine and dessert. There's got to be something thick and sweet and heavy. And one of my favourite desserts, 
and my grandson's favourite desserts is sticky toffee pudding. So that would be my dessert with a bit of cream on it or maybe some ice cream. So sticky toffee pudding with some ice cream. So there you go, Land Shark 503. The next question is from um, R Rated Customs, otherwise known as Anthony C. Robeson in the good old USA. And he's asking, boxers or briefs? What makes the best polishing cloth at the end of their life? Well, I don't wear boxers, so my polishing cloths are going to be made of briefs. I think briefs are so much softer anyway. Boxers tend to be a bit stiffer and hard, and I'm not keen of them. I like to have a bit of support, so it's got to be briefs. And briefs make the best polishing cloths as well. But I think you've got to wash them first. You want to make sure you've removed all the skid marks. Thank you, Nia Anthony. I hope that answers your question. The next one comes from um, Matman Tennessee, so matman.tn. And he's asking, if money is no object, what would you be your dream ride and where would you go? I think I'd like to stick with what I've got. My Tiger there. It's just such a perfect bike for me. It's comfortable. It's got a bit of poke when you need it. It will cope with the rough trails as well. So that's got to be my ride. And where will I go to ride it? Well, that's easy. I've seen so many great rides in New Zealand. It's not a huge country, but it's got everything there. I think, you know, mountains, beaches, hills, everything. I think um, New Zealand's got to be the place that I'd go if I'd got the money. So thanks, um, Matman, Tennessee. And seeing as I mentioned New Zealand, I better answer Volgnit's question now. Volgnit in New Zealand, otherwise known as Marty. And he wants to know, am I left or right-handed? Well, I'm right-handed. Um, we've got a couple of lefties in the family. My father and one of my sisters are lefty, but the rest of us are right-handed, including me. I found it's not been a handicap. You know, I survive every day using my right hand for most things. But I've got to admit, I do use my left hand if I'm doing something fiddly. It seems to have more precision than my right hand. And I don't know why that is. And he also asked, this is Volgnit, are you an innie or an outie? Well, I don't know whether he's talking about nipples, belly buttons or what, but when it comes to nipples, I'm an outie. And when it comes to my belly button, I'm an innie. But I won't show you. I think you all deserve to be spared that. So that's the few questions from this location. Let's move on to the next. moved on to another location now and this one is one of those places that I think will be recognized by anybody that's in the Suffolk crew not because it's a dogging spot because this is where we meet on a few ride outs that I've been on with them so let's have another question so Paul from all about motorbikes wants to know whether I'll be riding up to North Yorkshire and am I going to be doing any tours well, I don't have any plans to ride up to North Yorkshire, but I'd love to. It's a really beautiful part of the country. And as for doing any tours, I haven't got any plans. I'd like to do some tours, but circumstances don't really allow me to um, go away from home for extended periods of time just now. But uh, who knows in the future? So, if I get the chance, Paul, I will come up to North Yorkshire sometime and I will get in touch and let you know. 
Jeannie from Outdoor Adventures and Travelling and just asked me a nice simple question and how long I've been um, riding motorbikes well I think the first time I rode a motorbike was when I was 16 so that makes it about 45 or 46 years um, but the first time I owned one was when I was um, 18 so if we count that as the start um, I think that makes it um, 44 years I think so all my adult life really so thanks Jeannie Bandit Nev wants to know if I believe in reincarnation I don't really believe in any kind of religious stuff but um, reincarnation would be nice but I don't know what I'd like to come back as probably as myself and have another go at the whole thing again that would be cool as if, especially if I could learn from my mistakes so thanks Bandit Nev so Amanda from As The Magpie Flies asks have you ever thought about a round the world trip or even just an extended trip through Europe if I had the time and the um, and the circumstances to be able to do it I'd love to be able to do something like a round the world trip or even just more tours but you know things don't allow but um, when I worked I used to travel all around the world so um, I've been all over Europe into Asia and Africa so I've done a fair bit of traveling unfortunately just not on my motorbike but who knows what the future might bring and you might see me traveling further afield so thank you Amanda a nice simple question from Christopher David Lawson of northeastern Pennsylvania or by its initials NEPA he just asked Coke or Pepsi well for me it's Pepsi all the time I don't know why I just prefer Pepsi but I will drink Coke so um, Coke or Pepsi I don't mind but if there's a choice then I'll probably go for Pepsi so thanks Christopher and the final question at this location Chris Wallace 959 who's from the East Midlands I think in the UK got a nice little channel he just asked is it called a bacon cob a roll or a bap or something else in my area well I've moved around a lot um, but my family's from Yorkshire so we'd probably call it a bacon bun um, but I think they tend to call them bacon baps around here so thanks Chris um, it's just something you have to learn in this country they've got a thousand and one names for the same thing so um, yeah thanks Chris and um, check out his channel right it's time I moved on to my next location bye
Okay, now we're at the latest location, which is closed for the evening because it's the um, famous Snetterton Circuit in Norfolk in the UK. And I've come here mainly because Hippodrones asked me a question. Um, the first part of his question was, when are we going to grab a, a brew? Well, we did that. Uh, a couple of weeks ago when I came down south so we've um, ticked off the first part of his question and we've had the brew and the next part of the question were there any abandoned airfields near me well Norfolk has tens of abandoned airfields I think in the Second World War there were maybe something approaching 50 airfields in Norfolk and Peter if you um, just put up old World War II airfields in your browser you should find out I think there's quite a good website that lists them all so there's loads of them but I've come here because this was a World War II airfield, Snetterton Circuit. And um, during the wartime, the Americans were based here. So that's the answer to that part of the question. Any local castles? Well, of course, we have got some castles here locally. One of the most intact is Norwich Castle, which is open to the public, so you have to pay to get in. We've also got a castle at a place called Castle Rising, and I think there's probably a few others around. But um, we have quite a lot of history in um, East Anglia. So if you're searching to do your history podcasts, this could be the place to come. So thanks, Peter. That's Hippodrones. While I'm here, I better answer this question from Redline Runner, um, one of the motor vloggers in Croatia. So Redline Runner wants to know is, have I ever been to a nude beach? And would I like to go? Well, I have been to a nude beach before, but it was the middle of winter and there were no nudes there. So um, that was a bit of a dead loss. And I've no objection going to a nude beach. I'm just not keen on going to beaches in the UK. I understand there's one or two new, nice nude beaches in Croatia. So that'd be a great place to go. Bear all. But I have to be careful because I don't want to make all the other guys jealous um, just because of um, my physique. So thanks, Redline Runner. And let's do some Tankerman questions. So Tankerman from the deep, deep south in the good old USA. And um, he's asked six questions, which I think is rather greedy. If you've seen Tankerman, you'll know he's not shy of eating food. So, um, first question from Tanker Man, what country would you like to ride in and why? Well, I think I answered that on, on another question, so New Zealand would be the place to go. It's so varied. Who would I like to ride with? Well, I'm a bit of a loner, really. I tend to like to ride on my own. But if it um, came to improving my riding, then probably somebody famous. Um, that's good on racetracks. I'd like to have some coaching from a top-level motor race or uh, motorcycle rider. Um, that would do me. And what would I change on YouTube? Well, I don't think YouTube's too bad. YouTube serves a purpose. What I don't like on YouTube is the way that the small channels get ignored by the algorithm. So if you're small, you're likely to stay small unless you do something spectacular. Like most motor vlogging channels, it's got a limited interest and nobody else gets to see about it unless they happen to be searching for motor vloggers. So I think I'd change the algorithm and uh, try and make it so that more of the small channels get featured when people open up YouTube. The fourth question was, how many questions can we ask? Well, it appears you've got away with asking six. So thanks, Tanker Man. So he's asking number five question, does anybody else in my family ride? Well, no, not really. I had a cousin that used to ride, but he's having trouble with his eyesight, so he can't ride anymore. My dad used to ride before he got married. So way before I came along. And I had an uncle that used to ride. Uh, he lives in Canada now, and I understand he had a bike, but he's um, getting close to 80 now, so I don't think he rides anymore. 
but um, so I've never really um, got to know about his biking exploits but I do know he used to ride because when I visited his mother's house my grandmother some of his old gear in there so his old helmet from when he was a, a youth before he left for Canada was in the shed and we used to wear it and play with it and maybe that might have got me into motorbikes so his sixth question is what would you buy as a second bike now that'd be a really difficult question for me um, I'd quite like to have a sports bike again just just for the odd couple of hours having fun but I quite like what Tankerman does. He rides through trails in the forests in, um, is, I think it might be Louisiana, but somewhere down in the deep south. And that looks tremendous fun. So having that sort of trail riding bike would be great. The only thing is we haven't got that many trails around here. So on balance, I think um, I'd have to go for a sports bike as my second bike. So thanks very much, Tankerman and um, let's get back on the bike and do some more riding. So that's the end of part one. I hope I've not been too revealing and I hope you enjoyed some of the answers. I'll see you next time in part two. And if you've got any comments or supplementary questions, please leave them in the comments down below. So until part two, this has been Old Man Tony. Goodbye.